Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Not legal advice. Like, subscribe, share, comment. Uh, do remember, most importantly, share with your dog, because dogs love these videos. Uh, so before we, be, we begin, just to clarify one thing, refusing to go to the gym is a form of resistance training. Anyway, I wanted to, I, I think the Alpine legal situation as to what's going on in the Court of Appeal, even though I'm doing the best job I can in explaining it, I still think it's somewhat confusing. So I wanted to briefly address that and then I wanted to update everybody as to Sorrento Therapeutics. And also I'm going to be updating uh, as to Alpine also. So quick summary and I'll do these really quickly. Quick summary as to Alpine. So, uh, so Alpine for starting in 1984, I th think through about 2021, is found and found in admitted to, but found liable for and is, dis is disciplined by the SEC and whatever other organizations were around 40 times, 40 separate times, 40 separate times. That means, for example, on January 1, 1984, on January 2, 1999, that's two separate times, 40 times for various violations, many of which they admitted to overcharging, poor reporting, lack of supervision, misappropriation of funds, etc. And then we had, they were basically stealing money from clients, overcharging, etc. FINRA got an order, April 2022, cease and desist. A year later, FINRA finally took action. And by the way, that came up in one of the briefs that uh, Alpine filed, where they wondered why it took FINRA so long to intercede while after there was an order from the court already they waited 35,000 violations to intercede but anyway they did that went to court eventually it went to an appellate court and right now it's before a court of appeal the initial three judge panel issued an injunction so that FINRA cannot expel Alpine right now until the appeal itself is considered. That's unusual. FINRA appealed that injunction to the full court, and that full court has not yet to decide whether it will overrule the injunction. I would say that would be an extraordinary move also. So we have the injunction. Then we have the underlying appeal itself. So those are two separate proceedings, but the appeal in finality is the more key proceeding. And recently, being last Friday, I believe, the briefing schedule changed. So all the uh, briefing dates were kicked back two weeks. So the last brief on the appeal is due November 17th and then there's usually a 45 to 90 day period in which there might be oral argument and then a similar period in which a decision is issued. So that's kind of like the outside time frame of this particular proceeding. But as I say every time, and so that's up to date, that's the up to date uh, sequence of events. Injunction is pending. We're waiting to see if the entire Court of Appeal changes that, whether the injunction is pending. But the appeal will be going forward, and we'll have to see where it goes. So that's the change. The change is that we have uh, a, a new uh, briefing dates. And uh, like I said, last one's mid-November, then a period of time for the court to decide about oral argument, then oral argument where the parties come in and the judges will ask them questions or can and then the court will issue a ruling so that's if they go down that path the alternative path and the path again that I'm directing that FINRA take because they certainly can and I think they're just protecting their own inherent power by not doing it this way 
but they should go directly in the federal court, ask ask for the appointment of a receivable, a receiver, not a receivable, a receiver or some comparable entity to take over the business of Alpine and Ness and shut them down. They apparently have enough evidence to do that. They should do that, and they should uh, swallow the agency pride that it needs to be done in an administrative fashion and not through the courts. And they should do that immediately. So that's current, up-to-date, briefing, etc. Now, Sorrento Therapeutics, Sorrento Therapeutics was that bankruptcy case in Texas in which they found naked shorting. Uh, the parties got together and they structured a deal whereby if the naked shorts covered, they would be dismissed and could remain confidential. And then we saw that the complaint was dismissed. And we don't know what happened. Other than that, we surmised that there was a covering. So I'd, I made a bunch of calls. It took about like the seventh call, to about the seventh attorney, and there's a lot of attorneys involved in this particular case. Uh, but they acknowledged that there was a cover. So there was an agreement. I guess it's a complicated transaction. There's a re debt restructuring going on, and within that, the shorts had to cover all these naked positions which they did apparently or are doing and um, so it happened and it was agreed to within the bankruptcy court I asked one of the attorneys could you do that in a district court a federal district court he didn't know but it did occur and the shorts did have to cover and he did without disclosing he did indicate that the company had a significant involvement in determining the share price at which the shorts had to cover at what that price was. Now I don't know the numbers, the numbers didn't seem like you know like MMTLP numbers but again it was permitted and the judge signed off and it was a way for getting shorts to cover and to pay. Um, now I, I tried to ask him a bunch of other questions, this was lead counsel, so lead counsel on this particular so there was a bankruptcy. Within the bankruptcy, there was a complaint. That's called an adversarial action. This was the lead attorney for on that case. And he uh, agreed that at the end of the year, because they're doing the restructuring that will be done before the end of the, end of the year, for um, intellectual curiosity, he'll uh, have a sit down with me and we'll, he'll discuss kind of how this deal ran its course. Because I think by that time everything will have concurred, um, uh, uh, concluded. Excuse me. So I'll follow up with him when the time comes. It'll be interesting to see. But it certainly was a way of getting, again, certainly another manufactured way of getting shorts to cover uh, in a court, and seemed like in a very creative fashion. Uh, I wish I could get the information today, but I, again, I will stay on top of this and find out from counsel when he's able to speak, because there's some type of limitation on his ability to speak. When he's able to speak, I will speak to him, and we'll, we'll see what we garner from that. Um, but anyway, those are the two quickies I wanted to bring everybody up to speed with. Be well, take care, have a good day.